So you're going to see a migration to those areas. And common sense would tell you that investment would follow because there's going to be new job markets and new home ownership and that opportunity as well. My name is Charlie Opler, and I am in the real estate business for 41 years. I started at a very young age, one year out of college, and was fortunate to meet some of the top real estate brokers in New Jersey. And they both thought that I could do a pretty good job at this business. And I guess 40 years later, they were right. I'm the chief executive officer of Prominent Property Sotheby's, which is the largest company in New Jersey with 15 offices, 750 agents serving northern and central New Jersey. Sotheby's as a franchise started back in the 1700s with the auction house and only began really actively in real estate in 2004. And we've grown to over 25,000 agents in over 75 countries. And we did almost $200 billion of sales in two 2021. The other job I have is in 2021, I was the president of the National Association of Realtors, which is the largest trade organization in the United States with 1.6 million members. And we are the advocates for private property rights and to make sure that the government doesn't interfere with the ability to trade real estate free and clear with onerous laws and tax consequences. So we're always trying to protect the consumer, the client, and to make the real estate experience a better one for the over 300 million residents in the United States and around the world. 2 things. Just yeah. because the Federal Reserve raises the overnight lending rate, it doesn't necessarily mean the mortgage rates go up at the same pace. It certainly has followed in that area, but it hasn't gone completely to the overnight lending rate. Mm -hmm. Inflation, really what it does is it affects consumer confidence. Inflation at 8%, 8.5% in the United States is still way below the rest of the world. There are some countries where inflation is 70 and 80% and really has almost created economies that don't exist anymore. In the mm -hmm. United States, we still trade property. We still have multiple bids on property if somebody sees a value that they think is attractive. We still have the ability to buy and sell real estate. And if the rates got lower, you could refinance. The bigger challenge that we're seeing right now is inventory. Less people are inclined to sell their property because they're still not sure where they're going to move to. What we're seeing right now and our biggest concern is homes are still appreciating, even though the transactions are lowering, which still means that we don't have enough homes to sell. And if interest rates last year when we were in the four or five range or six months ago, it would take five and a half million new homes to meet the demand that exists in the United States today across the country. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough homes to sell. And most builders right now in the major cities would rather create rental housing because rental prices have gotten so expensive than to create new homes and run the risk of a market collapsing and having that inventory where renting is a much safer investment for most developers. One last reason why people stay in their homes longer is they live longer because of better medicine. So just by natural osmosis, people live longer and stay in their home longer. Yeah. So that hurts us on the inventory side where they would move more often and maybe move south mm -hmm. from the northeast or the Midwest because the weather was so bad to housing that was better weather as people aged. Now that's not the case as much. So what you're saying is inventory is, is still low. So that's why the market will still be strong for this year or next year. Absolutely. And we still have a lot of cash in the market. Yeah. We're still seeing transactions anywhere from 25 to 30 percent with significant down payments or actual cash purchases where people have saved money over the years make even before the adjustment in the stock market, there was still a lot of cash in our system to buy real estate. Two different philosophies. Because of major cities and the success of major cities, there was a comfort that people wanted to be near New York, Boston, San Francisco, Atlanta, Dallas, all the major cities, because you felt that those economies would come back the quickest. But we also saw investment in southern states and more tax-friendly states, Texas, Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida. So not only did you have warm weather or warmer weather than the North Northeast, mm -hmm. 
you had tax advantages. Uh, in some areas, you had lower prices. Now, you didn't have necessarily the diversity that foreign investors like, but you had the financial strength of growing cities in the South, whether it was uh, Nashville, Tennessee, or Huntsville, Alabama, or some of the smaller cities in Texas. And for the same reason that you saw people leaving California for Nevada, for Arizona, for Oregon, for Montana, were tax advantages plus lower prices. So mm -hmm. you got more for your money. You could not only look at an investment, but also a place to live. How do you yep. think about uh, Georgia? Great state for investment. We've yep. seen companies leave New Jersey and, and other colder states, if you will, for the South Carolina, yep. uh, Alabama, Texas. A lot of companies have relocated in Georgia as well that have built big plants. I believe Mercedes built in Texas and BMW built in South Carolina. Google now is building in Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia. They're building a new mega city. So yeah. I think you're going to see a lot of that. I think Tesla was building a big plant in Texas. So you're going to see a migration to those areas. And common sense would tell you that investment would follow because there's going to be new job markets and new home ownership and that opportunity as well.